Hey guys, so today we want to show you the ingredients that we're going to use to make our spicy chili loaded nachos. So as you can see, we have a variety of things. We're going to start off with our chicken breast. You can use any chicken of your choice or any meat of your choice. We have some green onions. Let me show you the green onions real quick so you guys yeah. could take a look right there. We have some jalapenos. We have some sour cream. These are the Doritos that we're going to use. Spicy sweet chili. Because this is the only brand. This is the only kind we have not used. We use the regular. We use the blue one. We use the flaming Hot. Yeah, we use the spicy one. So we wanted to use these. And these are the cheeses that we're going to be using. Now, you can add whatever you want to this. We were going to make a slaw, like a coleslaw, but we were like, you know what? Let's just make it basic. And then we were also, I wanted avocados, but she didn't grab any in the super. You could put she didn't tomatoes. Tell me. You can, we were going to think of putting bacon, but I'm like, nah, let's just make it like this. We also have barbecue sauce. Yes, I forgot to get the barbecue sauce. Let me get it out to show you the different kinds of barbecue sauce that we're going to use. These are the barbecue sauces that we're going to be using. We're going to use the Kraft Sweet and Brown uh, Sugar. And then this one is my favorite one. This one is the Sweet Honey and Molasses. It's really, really good. I love this, so I only have a little bit, so I'm just going to mix this up. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take our meat, we're going to trim the fat off, we're going to let it soak over maybe 15 minutes in warm water, um, in vinegar, and we're just going to let this um, clean itself for a little bit. And so we decided at last minute just to add bacon as well, just because why not add more bacon, add more chicken, whatever you want. So... We are going to be using this brand. This one is gluten-free, which is kind of weird because I never even heard that bacon is gluten-free. But well, it's pretty cool to me. Yeah, so we're going to use this one. It is frozen, so we're just going to let this thaw out and then put it in the oven. It's better that way instead of cooking it in the kit, um, in the stovetop where you're getting splattered and all that stuff. Better to do it in the oven. Okay, guys, so right now I'm just taking a little knife and I'm just poking some holes in my meat what this is going to do is once i season my meat it's going to make sure that all the juices and all the seasonings seep through inside the meat because y'all know my policy no bland chicken policy in this crib so i want to make sure that everything is flavorful not only on the outside the bottom but the inside as well my meat is nice and cleaned wow you're putting a lot of oil on that it's because i wanted to go under um, the pan so they don't stick. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take some salt. Let me start opening some of the stuff. We should have been prepared. We apologize. I'm taking salt and then pepper. So I'm just gonna season one side at a time, you guys, and then I'll flip them over and, you know, season the bottom. Now we're gonna add some garlic. I go heavy and on the garlic. Marlene wants to go heavy. Let me add a little bit of paprika on this side. Although we're gonna season it from both sides. That's what I'm telling her, but she don't she don't give me a chance ever. These are some big pieces of meat. And what we're gonna do is put these in the oven for how long you would say, Marlene? I'm gonna do an hour at 350 because I like to roast them really slow and for a little while. And then after the hour I'll take it out and see how what we're working with because I am going to be cooking this um, twice, so I'm going to be, I'll show you guys when we're done. And we're only going to use smoke pack paprika, if we didn't tell you, garlic powder, and, um, Pe black pepper, and, and then salt. salt, and that's it. And the reason why is because um, I was asking Marlene if she wanted to do um, oregano, parsley flakes, and stuff like that, but she was like, let me add a little bit of black pepper. She was like, no, because, you know, we are going to be drowning this in barbecue sauce. And there's no point in us adding so much seasoning to it, knowing that we're just going to douse it in barbecue sauce, if that makes any sense. And I feel like this is going to be a good combo, um, especially all the garlic that we put. Um, so I'm going to add more salt. You think so? Okay. Yeah, because... I'm going to add a little bit more garlic, because we love garlic. We love garlic, so... We eyeball everything. We've been doing this for years, so I know when it needs more salt and not. Um, and I like to mix it a lot very well. Hence why, you know, I would have been doing it with my fingers. 
but because I have these long claws, I'm going to be doing it with the fork and just keep on moving it back and forth and making sure that everything is well seasoned because man, these pieces of chicken are heavy. And we only paid $5 and change for this pack of meat. So I mean, a little goes a long way, but we are gonna be making two trays. So one meat is for my dad and my brother and then the other one is for me and Marlene. Stay tuned tomorrow because it's gonna be a good topic and the mukbang is going up tomorrow. Um, we decided to record this for you guys because you guys kind of got upset low-key if we don't put the video of what we make. So we're taking that into consideration and we decided to do this. So we are going to let this sit for like five minutes so that all the flavors marinate together. And then we're going to put it in the oven 350 for an hour and then we'll show you once that hour is done. Guys, right, so we decided to use these little aluminum foil pans that we had to bake cakes and stuff and since we only had two we decided to use these and then throw them out so this is what the meat is looking like after it was marinating sorry kind of looks a little bit lopsided is because i'm using a tray just in case if we like um, make a mess in the oven or anything they're flimsy to pack. yeah so we decided to use this look how big these meat are like OMG. I told you they were heavy. They're huge, huge. But we wanted to use it because it is a lot of nachos. And we want every nacho chip to have a piece of meat. So you already know. So this is our meat. We left it for an hour, 10 minutes, an hour and 15 at 350. Because we were washing our hair and stuff. Which is fine because this meat is really big. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to cover it with a plate. Let it rest for a little bit. And then we'll show you the next step. Because there's another process. And even if you feel like you take your meat out and it's not completely done. We'll explain to you why it doesn't really necessarily matter because at this we're point gonna put it back in the oven and cook it yeah she's trying to say so yes so here is our bacon i had to use two pans don't mind my little crusty pan but i love this so what we did we took some aluminum foil and then we just put the bacon slices like this because it's so much better and this is so much easier than just putting it on a pan itself because it gets super oily so once this is done we could just throw the aluminum foil out so we're gonna put this in 350 maybe like 20 to 30 minutes because we like our bacon crispy crispy up in this crib it's done you guys after 20 minutes this is how we like our bacon i would have let it go in a little bit more but since we're gonna put the nachos in the oven i'm just gonna let it do its thing you guys so i got my fork we left i left our meat cool for what like 30 minutes 30 minutes so all you want to do is just shred the chicken apart as best as you can um hold on so a little you can little, also do it with your hands if you want to yeah but, but i don't feel like it so little by little see it just falls off you just gotta take your time and do this however you want. I like it really small like this because it distributes very well in the um, nachos. nachos. Yeah, you want every piece to have. So just shred it the best way you can. And um, I'm just going to continue doing this. And I'll show you once it's completely done. So I shredded my chicken. This one came out a little bit big. But my hands El pollo. So we're going to add sweet brown sugar barbecue to come, el pollo come on you dumbass come on we're just gonna put a lot because i want it to be like really barbecuey like saucy yeah if so. that makes any sense hold on let you me guys. hold this hold on because yeah, this is hold very it. like hold that like that and let me mix this okay it looks like i don't even have strength to hold it that's because hold on you guys this plate is down here and it yeah. should be down here sorry for my stove i gotta clean it so don't think that we don't clean that here. we don't clean but you know how it is when you cook yeah so i'm sorry it's hard to do this with one hand and, and i should be doing holding it and doing it but you're holding I have the, the bar barbecue sauce wow your nails in the freaking way man okay add a little bit more because yeah. we want it a little bit more saucy saucy hashtag saucy okay hold the thing I so will, but just give me a chance give me a chance okay let me mix this side a little bit so this one is done so you could do whatever you want if you want to do like taco sauce whatever sauce green sauce whatever 
sauce you want to do hot sauce you could do whatever you want we just wanted to try this one because barbecue because we've done like mild sauce and all that good yeah stuff, so, so we're gonna put this back in the oven for 15 minutes so that the meat and the barbecue sauce can marinate with each other. Marry. Marry, rarry, dairy. <laughs> oh, shut up. We're going to put it for 15 minutes at 350. Okay, you guys. So, I put my layer of chips on the bottom. We have some, let's do some sharp cheddar cheese. We're going to do some all over the chips. Now, you can do this the way that you want. This is the way that we do it. You guys have been requesting to see um, how we do our we nachos. Loaded nachos yeah. Every bag is clean, so don't start, you know, the food police coming here saying, and eh, the bags are dirty. We yeah, cleaned we cleaned everything. everything. Okay? okay. So now we're going to add some meat. Just drop um, in each corner or in each chip. Just drop as best as you can okay just use half okay because we have more chips to put on top okay so oh my god you guys should smell this it smells amazing in here amazing amazing grace <laughs> marlene shut up boy dio <laughs> Okay, so. I would have been singing, but I don't know the song that well, so. Yeah, you don't want to disrespect the person that made the song. Okay, so now we are going to add some bacon. And, you know, even if one chip doesn't have chicken, it's going to have some type of bacon because. And cheese. Yeah, so. so. Everything should be good. Let's put some here and a little bit here. Okay. Now we're going to add some more cheese because this is the glue of everything. Now you can make this however you want. Your heart desires a little bit of mozzarella. Okay. Now we're going to add a little bit of green onions just because we want a little bit. And I'm going to put enough jalapenos on my dad because I left the seeds and everything because he likes spice. So we got that. And now we have one more layer, which I'm probably not going to use all of it because it is a lot of nachos. So that is a good amount right there. We always have leftover nachos like chips. We don't use them all. So, more cheese. Open the other sharp mild. Um, right here. Let me just use a little bit of this one. Okay. And now we're just going to add more meat. Okay. The top is always the star of the show. So, if you make this for someone, you know, you could do this for like a get together. If you like hosting parties at your crib. Obviously, you don't want to do it now, but, you know, once this is all over with, you know, you could do whatever you want on this. Put whatever your heart desires. And, yeah. That's that with the meat. A little bit more bacon on top. Okay. We are going to add a little bit more cheese. And lastly, but not least, we're going to add a little bit of onions on top and a little bit more jalapenos and voila. This bad boy is going to go into the oven 350 for 10 to 15 minutes and we'll show you once it's done. So these are the nachos. We only left it in for 5 to 10 minutes because we don't want the chips to get too soggy, but look how bomb. Bam. Bam. Who's over? Don't forget, the mukbang is coming up tomorrow, you guys. Make sure to stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, give it a like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Bye, guys. See ya!